What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another Game of Thrones in a Song of Ice and Fire update video. In this video, I'll be discussing what George R. R. Martin once said about his original outline and ending for a Song of Ice and Fire. Now, for those of you who don't know, George R. R. Martin wrote an outline where he described exactly what would happen in his A Song of Ice and Fire novels. He actually wrote this before he even finished writing his first novel, A Game of Thrones, all the way back in 1993. You can see the whole outline if you look for it online. Now, back when he wrote this, he had no way of knowing this would ever see the light of day. He ended up revealing a lot of information because, as I said, he had no reason to believe this would be seen by millions of his fans. And ever since then, his fans have been debating about whether this outline was real or not. Everyone wants to know, will A Song of Ice and Fire end like Game of Thrones, or will it look like this original outline, or maybe something new? Although his story has gone in a much different direction, what makes this so fascinating is it gives us some insight into where he originally wanted to go with A Song of Ice and Fire. I can still remember how excited I was when I first read this years ago, because I thought it gave us a glimpse into how his saga might end. In his original outline, he even revealed who his five main characters were and what would happen to each of them by the end. He said five central characters will make it through all three volumes, however, growing from children to adults and changing the world and themselves in the process. In a sense, my trilogy is almost a generational saga, telling the life stories of these five characters who are three men and two women. They are Tyrion Lannister, Daenerys Targaryen, and three of the children of Winterfell, Arya, Bran, and the bastard Jon Snow. They would be his main focus, and when he wrote this outline back in 1993, he said they would survive everything that happens in A Song of Ice and Fire. Now this is fascinating because although he did not go in the same directions of this outline, I would say these five characters are still the main focus. Think about how Game of Thrones ended, for example. Other than Danny, they were the ones who were still standing at the end. They were able to survive everything that happened in Game of Thrones. Now fans are still having a big debate about how George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire novels will end. Some say they will end exactly like the show, while others say they will go in a very different direction. Many fans also believe George R. R. Martin gave his ending to Game of Thrones writers David and Dan, and therefore A Song of Ice and Fire will have the same ending. They believe exactly what we saw in Game of Thrones will also happen in The Winds of Winter. Now I'm not so sure about that myself. I think this original outline is a great example of how he can change his mind over time. Now I want you to see what George said about the original outline. He did admit that it was real and he was angry when it leaked online, but then he gave us some great insight into how he actually writes and I believe he can help us understand how he might end A Song of Ice and Fire. Now, before I show you what he actually said, I have to let all of you know about this amazing new offer. I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome top shelf goods from under the radar brands. It's not only free to join, but you can also skip a month or cancel any time. 90% of their products come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the United States. For example, I absolutely love the American Barbecue Rub-In, the Carnivore Box, and it's made by the Great American Spice Company in Rockford, Michigan. Now every month, Bespoke Post introduces their members to cool new products including outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and even live oysters. That's based on a preference quiz you fill out yourself. Every box of awesome has around $70 worth of goods inside but costs you only a fraction of that, and you can even review your boxes before they ship. You have the option to keep it, swap it for a different box, or skip the month entirely with no charge, so you only pay for the stuff you want. Some of my favorite boxes have been the Carnivore Box, which came with an incredibly sharp meat cleaver, and the American Barbecue Rub-In. The Terra came with my favorite bare bones knife with a sheaf, a detox scrub bar, and an Audubon bird call, and the Trail Box came with a field box, a gut hook knife, the Surviving the Great Outdoors book by Brandon Leonard, and a pocket saw with nylon straps and a paracord bracelet. Now to get 20% off your first box of awesome, click the link in the description and enter the checkout code THRONES20 or go to bespokepost.com slash THRONES20. You don't want to miss out on this amazing offer. Once again, I have to thank Bespoke Post for sponsoring today's video. Alright, now let's have a look at what George R. R. Martin said about the original outline, as well as his insight into how he's writing the story. He said, I began writing these novels back in 1991, but I ended up setting them aside to go work in television. I started writing them again in 1994. You know, up until then in my career as a writer, I'd always written the entire novel first before I opted for sale. I will admit that it's unusual. Most writers do chapters and an outline. 
they write a few chapters, they outline the rest, and then they'll give that to the publisher to basically see if they want it. As some of you may have noticed, I'm not good with deadlines, and uh, I'm not good with outlines either. So with Fever Dream and Armageddon Rag, and with Dying of the Light in all my novels, I wrote the entire thing first without writing an outline. I didn't do chapters and outlines. I sat down, I wrote a whole book, and I sent it to my agent and said, look, here's a whole book and it's already done. That way I did not have to worry about deadlines and it was finished before it even went onto the market. And that always worked well for me. And my initial thought was to do A Song of Ice and Fire the same way. But what happened was in 1994, when I started writing them again, I felt very enthused about it. And I said, I do want to write these Game of Thrones books next, but I was still in Hollywood. And I just lost all this groundwork on the show Doorways. I was still stuck in this phase where the studios and networks wanted to work with me. They were giving me offers about writing movies and other shows. And I eventually did do some of those and I thought, oh god, I gotta set this Game of Thrones book aside again. You know, when you think Hollywood, they will give you a deadline, you know. They say, here son, write this movie. We want it in three months. So I said, look, if I want to get back to being a novelist, I'm gonna have to sell this even before it's done. So, I had my 13 chapters of Game of Thrones at the time, but they wanted an outline. And I said, I don't do outlines. I don't know what's going to happen. I figure it out as I go along. And that's how I always did it. Now, what he said right there is interesting because that's what might be happening with the Winds of Winter. He said he always figures it out as he goes along. Therefore, the Winds of Winter might not look anything like what he gave to the Game of Thrones writers. Then he goes on to say, they demanded an outline before they would buy the first novel of Game of Thrones. So he said, I wrote two pages, a two-page thing about what I thought would happen. It'll be a trilogy. It'll be three books, A Game of Thrones, A Dance with Dragons, and The Winds of Winter. Those were the three window titles. And, uh, it'll be three books and this'll happen and this'll happen and this'll happen. And I was making shit up. And I had thought that outline was long forgotten because of course the books did sell. They sold for enough money that I didn't have to take any more Hollywood games. So that's when I decided I'm gonna write these books. And after a while, I basically disregarded the outline. My characters took me off in entirely different directions, so for 20 years, I'd forgotten about the outline even existing. That was until someone at HarperCollins released it after they got a new office building. They didn't even ask me if they could release it. I was furious. Now this is also interesting because he's basically saying nothing in that outline mattered. He said he was making shit up. Therefore, those five main characters may not survive what happens in A Song of Ice and Fire either. Like I said earlier, we know he had Daenerys surviving, yet she did not survive what happened in Game of Thrones. And we all know many fans believe that same thing will happen in The Winds of Winter or A Dream of Spring. If you ask me, I don't think those five characters are safe anymore. Not only did Danny already die in the show, but he's also already gone in very different directions from what he wrote in that outline. We know Rob Stark did not die in battle. We know Lady Catelyn did not die out beyond the wall. And at least as of right now, John and Arya did not have a romantic relationship. So much is already different. Now, another thing I do find interesting, however, is the fact that George was so mad about the outline getting out there. If he made it all up like he said, and none of it was ever going to happen, then why did he get so upset about everyone reading it? Out of those five characters George said would survive, there's really only one who we can sort of guarantee, and that would be Bran Stark. After Game of Thrones ended, it was revealed that it was George himself who gave them the information about Bran becoming king. Everyone else on that list very well could die. After all, Jon is already dead, and there's no guarantee he will be back. At least not in the same sense or physical form as before. I guess I say all that to say no one is really safe. It doesn't matter what happened in the outline or Game of Thrones. He said he figures things out as he writes, and as we all know, he's been writing The Winds of Winter for a very long time. It has been over a decade since he had that sit-down with David and Dan, when he gave them some information about his ending. Think about it like this. How likely is all that to have remained the same after so much time has gone by? I would guarantee he's done rewrite after rewrite since then, and that's why we still don't have the Winds of Winter. He still hasn't figured out how he will end things himself. Now, we can make some educated guesses, but at the end of the day, none of us really know what will happen when it's all said and done. What happened in Game of Thrones might not matter, and what he wrote in that outline might not matter either. However, with that being said, feel free to let me know what you believe. Do any of you believe those five characters will still survive? How many of you think Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire will have the same ending? 
or do you think we will see something entirely new and fresh? Leave your thoughts down below. As always, I have to thank all of you for watching another video. I hope you have a great day. I will see you again very soon. Bye.